Michigan State goes down for the first time under Mel Tucker in 2021, but of course there's still much to play for in the Big Ten Eastern Division. We got Ryan O'Blennis on the line from SB Nations, the only colors with Michigan State taking on Maryland this Saturday. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Mark. How you doing? I'm doing just fine. Uh, 40 to 29 loss to Purdue. Uh, Michigan State, a three-point favorite on the road. Not a huge surprise. They weren't an overwhelming favorite, but still uh, the first loss of the season. So that's uh, uh, stings. And uh, certainly the the kind of the fantasy ride that Michigan State uh, gets an abrupt halt, but still much to play for. Um, looking at this Purdue game with uh, Purdue putting up 40 points, Aiden O'Connell, a ton of yardage. Um, Purdue really went to the air attack in this one. We talked in previous weeks about there being some level of criticism out there that Michigan State secondary was not the best. You know, the, the passing prowess of Purdue would, would tend to lend itself to uh, maybe finding Michigan State's weakness. Right. Yeah. I mean, you saw the weaknesses in the past defense, you know, throughout the season, but this past week in particular, Purdue was really able to expose it. O'Connell threw for, I think, 536 yards. I mean, you just can't have that. Uh, and, you know, in, in addition to that, a big issue that Michigan State had on Saturday was the defense couldn't get off of the field on third down. Uh, at one point, Purdue was, I believe, 10 for 13 and, and finished the game uh, 11 for 18 on third down conversion. So, you know, when you're allowing a, a team to pass for – well over 500 yards on you and you're allowing a team to convert, you know, over 60% of third down conversions on you, then it's not going to end well. Um, you know, the, the team fought and, and I don't think, you know, focus was an issue. I don't think that, uh, you know, it was a matter of not being prepared. It was just Purdue, you know, exposed Michigan state's weaknesses. And that's something that MSU is going to need to, you know, really, study the film for it to do better, um, you know, in the coming weeks with a lot of heavy passing teams coming up, starting with Maryland. Yeah. And many times when a team is either forced to, or chooses to throw the ball that many times, 54 times, and they'll rack up yardage five thirty six, but they'll make mistakes too. 54 passes. Maybe you'll turn it over a few times, but Aiden O'Connell clean with three touchdowns and no interceptions. If you look at the offensive side for Michigan state, pretty much a, Typical performance from Kenneth Walker with a buck 36 on 6.2 yards per carry. And Peyton Thorne did well for the most part, despite an interception. So what was your take on the Michigan State offense? Uh, Jalen Naylor was not available, correct? Yeah, Naylor was out uh, with a hand injury that he suffered against Michigan. So that was a big blow. Um, they also were without left tackle Jared Horst, um, you know, who's been starting most of the season. So. That was also kind of a big deal. The injuries are starting to mount up. Uh, and, you know, you some guys did step up in Naylor's place, like Trey Mosley and, and Montori Foster. So that um, wasn't an issue. But at the same time, you don't have, you know, not having a guy like Naylor with his speed and playmaking ability is going to kind of stifle your offense. But, um, you know, they, they were still able to move the ball, still had a pretty balanced attack. Walker still had a good game. He fumbled on the opening possession of the game though, which kind of maybe set the tone to, you know, how the rest of the game was, was going to go. Uh, but, you know, I think that I would say overall the offense played a lot better than the defense did with their execution issues on both sides of the ball. It's, of course, a Big Ten loss, but it's a non-division loss. They already have the big win against Michigan under their belts. Maryland comes up, Penn State down the road. At the end of the season, of course, oh yeah, Ohio State and Columbus as well. I uh, got Ryan O'Blennis on the line from uh, SB Nation's uh, The Only Colors to break down Michigan State taking on Maryland. And you had mentioned um, before we get to Maryland, um, just in regards to Mel Tucker's demeanor, what he had to say after the game, and then here in his weekly news conference now that they've they've suffered a loss, but all the goals are still right in front of them. Yeah, exactly. Michigan State still controls its own destiny in the Big Ten East. Uh, you know, they have to win out in order to uh, go to Indianapolis for the Big Ten championship game. So, they, you know, that starts this weekend with Maryland. And then 
there's the big game in Columbus uh, the following week against Ohio State. And then there's also, you know, a sneaky tough game at the end of the schedule against Penn State. So it's definitely not going to be an easy road. Uh, however, you know, the, their goals are, like you said, still right in front of them. Simply went out and you'll go to Indianapolis. So it's going to be interesting to see how this team responds to its first loss. It's also going to be somewhat interesting, and what I'm about to say is going to be null and void by the time anybody watches this, but the College Football Playoff Selection Committee's rankings come out in a few years, few hours after this recording. And, uh, you know, considering that Oklahoma, Michigan was ranked ahead of Oklahoma. Michigan with one loss ahead of an undefeated Oklahoma team. Some people I've, I've heard forecasting Michigan State just to plummet in these rankings, but it's only one loss, close loss against a team that's now defeated two top five teams, and they've beat Michigan head to head. So I would think that the the drop can't be that much for Michigan State if you take the totality of the resume into account. Yeah, I'm thinking, uh, you know, if you look at the, the AP poll and the coaches poll that were released this week, Michigan State was still in the top 10. Obviously, the college football playoff ranking committee. Uh, does things a little bit differently so it's not for sure but you know I'd I'd be pretty surprised if Michigan State falls past the top 10 or at least top 11. Folks please uh, like the video share these videos out on social media because if you enjoy the content others will as well. Also join us on Patreon I pick all the top 25 games plus 13 and 8 against the spread this past week 120 and 77 against the spread. Uh, well over 60% for the season. That will do well for you. And then we got 20 media members on there making their selections as well. We got uh, Ryan O'Blennis on the line from the only colors SB Nation for Michigan State taking on Maryland. Yes, uh, Talia Tungavailoa. He's going to put it up. Uh, he does each and every week. Uh, the Maryland issue is defense, and they make too many mistakes on offense. They'll hit you for a ton of yardage, but they'll typically cough it up and, and make – plenty of mistakes in the red zone. Uh, They had a close game against Penn state for three plus quarters at 14 all. Then yeah, they made mistakes and lost by 17 points, but uh, Maryland's a a dangerous team. Yeah, I I would agree with that. You know, as we discussed, Michigan state secondary got exposed last week by Purdue and Maryland is going to chuck the ball, you know, quite a few times. They're going to watch the film and see that. And that plays to their strengths, but, as you mentioned, you know, I expect Michigan State's offense to, to be able to move the ball and score quite well on the Maryland defense that has struggled this year. Um, and as you also mentioned, you know, Maryland has been really prone to mistakes. Uh, you know, they, they rank toward the bottom of the country in turnover margin. And I think that's an area that Michigan State can take advantage of. Obviously, you know, there's going to be things that that need to be cleaned up from last week's performance in the secondary in particular and on the defense and getting off, off of the field uh, on third down. But, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised to see this one be kind of a high scoring track meet. Yeah. This is a Maryland defense that, um, you know, if you take some of these teams into consideration, I was not scoring against anyone 51 points against Maryland. Some of it was defense generated, but still the offense had a day too. Ohio state 66, Minnesota, again, they're a run first, uh, grind it out, scoring in the 20s, typically 34 points. Indiana, minus Michael Penix, has not been an offensive team. They only scored seven against Michigan last week, 35, and then uh, 31 for Penn State. So Maryland, yeah, we'll give it up on defense. It should be a, an interesting one. And Ryan, before we let you go, just want to make sure um, you'd mentioned some injuries and you also uh, certainly talked about it uh, before we started to record. Uh, did you run all those down in regards to uh, the injury concerns? Yeah, uh, you know, I think Charles Brantley, the, the true freshman cornerback who made the big play against Michigan, uh, he, you know, it looks like there's a possibility that he may be out for a long period of time. Uh, you know, Mel Tucker does not give updates on injuries. In fact, in his weekly press conference this week, he, he literally said that he doesn't like to do that. He doesn't want to give the other teams a competitive advantage about which players are going to be out there and which aren't. So it, it's really hard to tell. But, you know, uh, 
Brantley was playing this last game banged up, and it sounds like he might have re-injured something. And then Ronald Williams, another cornerback, he was also playing this game bang or playing last week's game against Purdue banged up. So you know what to see what their statuses are like. And then I, I wouldn't be surprised if Naylor missed another game with the hand injury. Um, you know, Horse could still be out with whatever is going on with him. Um, you know, but again, it's kind of hard to, to measure because you know the, the program doesn't give updates, but. It does seem like the injuries are starting to pile up. So it's, uh, once again, Michigan State and Maryland playing in College Park uh, and a Michigan State uh, secondary that's been banged up and just gave up a 536 spot to Aiden O'Connell, taking on a quarterback in Talia Tungavailoa, who has thrown it 339 times in nine games. So they like to to throw it downfield. Michigan State, Maryland, Ryan O'Blennis, SB Nation's uh, the only colors breaking it down for us. Ryan, we appreciate you stopping by as always. Yeah, always a pleasure to be here. Thanks, Mark.